today I am going to show you how to make my grandfather's famous stuffed artichokes. They use gorgeous, huge globe artichokes like this, and then I stuff them to the brim with garlicky Italian breadcrumbs, pecorino cheese, drizzle the whole thing over with olive oil, some chicken broth to continue letting them steam so that the, the breadcrumbs aren't like dry and falling over the place. They just saturate and sink into each of these pulled apart leaves so that as you're sitting here pulling leaf by leaf, chowing down on the most gorgeous celebratory vegetable, side dish, or possibly main, just load your plate up. Um, you will be transported, I hope, to Staten Island, where my grandfather grew up, where the roots of this recipe lie, and be thrilled. So uh, the only sort of tricky piece to begin with is we're gonna trim these artichokes, which uh, all I'm gonna do is grab some uh, shears and just snip uh, your way around, sort of taking off the top third, especially of these outer leaves where they're really kind of stiff and pointy. Artichokes, I have to tell you, I've, I've seen a real artichoke bush in the wild. <laughs> and they're vicious. These things are like meant to, to survive the apocalypse. They are spiny, evil looking, and impossible to access if you were like, you know, a happy little bird or animal trying to just greedily eat up a bunch of artichokes off the bush because they're just they're they're they come with their own armor before you get to the most tender succulent gorgeous artichoke heart deep in the center which is your prize after you've eaten your way around these tender leaves round and round and round and round, and round to the choke which you're not going to eat to the heart which you are going to love and then once i get to the top just slice down and then for the stem just trim off the very outer edge, not too much, because we're gonna use these stems, you'll see how. Try to leave as much of it intact as possible and you will see why it is one of the secrets to why I would argue my grandfather's stuffed artichokes are the most delicious in the whole world. So, story time about Uncle Mickey, while I just quickly trim the tops and then I'll work my way around the edges. So, Uncle Mickey lives in Staten Island still with his wife, Lynn. Hi guys. <laughs> and, um, and my Uncle Mickey is a great cook, a really fabulous cook. He claims that my grandfather's other most famous recipe, which is his gorgeous, beyond spectacular Staten Island special sauce, it's red sauce. I wrote about it in my book, Relish. If you have that book, you have the recipe and you know what a beyond delicious, authentic Sunday style gravy it is. Um, that I grew up basically every weekend smelling being created in my grandfather's kitchen. Um, and like some of my earliest few memories are sneaking up to that pot with a nice hunk of crusty bread and dipping it into the bubbling red sauce with the, all the olive oil and the garlic and the onion. Um, and yeah, it was that smell and that taste are probably some of my favorites. Um, Anyway, Uncle Mickey thinks that all my grandfather's recipes are his, and they, and they constantly fight about whose actual recipes they are. So even though these are my grandfather's, <laughs> I'm sure Uncle Mickey had something to do with why they are so spectacular. It is a collaboration of two brothers. One other thing you might wanna do just to really tenderize the stem is grab a vegetable peeler and just sort of take off put a little muscle behind it and you will take off that outer edge of the stem without carving away too much because you really wanna leave as much of that stem in intact as you possibly can. You will see why it's one of my grandfather's special tricks. This is the grandfather married to my grandmother who gave us the gift of eggless Caesar salad dressing, which so many of you love. So trust that this family understands about delicious food like this, especially when it comes to foods that include lots of garlic and pecorino cheese. It's us. Okay, so the first step to cooking the artichokes is gonna be to steam them so that we soften the leaves and can really spread them apart and then we'll have plenty of nooks and crannies to stuff our gorgeous breadcrumb mixture into. Grab yourself a steamer basket and set it into a deep pot with like two to three inches of water. You basically want the water just low enough that it's not touching the steamer basket base, but high enough that it will create plenty of liquid. And if you're working in small batches or you need to replenish the water, it's very easy to do so. Just pour some more water in. I'm going to be using a Danube. 
I keep this on my back stove all the time. You guys ask about this constantly. It is a Japanese ceramic steamer. It's pottery. It's gorgeous and it works very well. I use it to steam all kinds of veggies. And today we are going to see how many artichokes I can stick inside of this thing. Um, no real rhyme or reason here. Just kind of tuck them in. I will say the capacity on this is quite extraordinary considering how small it actually is. Um, but I might have met my match today. Artichokes, I don't think we're part of the equation. Um, these are just extraordinarily giant artichokes, so my lid is not totally closing, which means I'll just come in here and rotate them once in a while to make sure that the whole situation is getting nice and hot. But part of the joy and beauty of this pot is it actually circulates the steam really nicely. So we'll see. It should work fine. I do have these two lovely artichokes left, which I just want to show you so if you're doing this at home and you don't have a steamer basket or whatever, all you want to do is put them into a big pot like so and add, I would say, an inch of water to the base of your pan and then bring it up to a boil, cap it, let, let it steam. And what you're going to do is just keep refilling. Try and try, resist the temptation to completely submerge your artichokes in water because the boiling process, A, takes out some of the nutrition, B, dilutes some of the flavor, and what you really want is just tender, perfectly cooked leaves that are flexible and pliable for the breadcrumb filling. You don't want like watery, wet leaves. So this just involves a little more work of you coming back to remind yourself to fill and keep it at about an inch level of water. Steam, about half an hour. You'll know they're done when you can stick a fork all the way into the center of the artichoke without a lot of resistance. Let's make some breadcrumbs. All right, so now for that flavorful, delicious Italian breadcrumb mixture. Um, my grandpa does, as I think I mentioned before, like to add quite a bit of cheese and garlic into this mix. And I think that's why it stays so lusciously moist and ultra flavorful and why eating a vegetable has never been so much fun in your whole life. Um, it starts with yummy Italian breadcrumbs and he doesn't really measure I made up the measurements for him from watching, but he kind of just eyeballs, so I'm gonna show you how the mix comes together. About a cup and a half of um, Italian breadcrumbs, and these are big artichokes. I feel like I'm gonna go a little, I'm gonna make a little bit more of a batch because there's nothing worse than feeling like you got stiffed on the breadcrumbs you were owed. And then almost an equal amount of cheese. Like you, it's, you know, it's roughly like one to one and a quarter. Um, so call it, if we did a cup and a half of breadcrumbs, we did a cup of cheese. But then once you're here, it's like, why not add more? Why, why stop there? Keep it cheesy. I will say, in this instance, there is such a thing as too much cheese. You don't actually want like big pieces of melting cheese in your artichokes. You want the cheese to stay lacy and sort of like grease the breadcrumbs with a little extra fat and saltiness but not get in the way of the breadcrumbs themselves. I'm gonna take a nice big pinch of kosher salt, sprinkle that in, about a teaspoon here. Now remember the cheese has its own salt, so you don't wanna go overboard. And then you can use either um, a teaspoon of oregano or an Italian seasoning like this, which has some basil in there and marjoram and um, some thyme. Now for the flavor boosters, let's talk about some garlic going in. You need it. You just gotta have it. Kind of what we're doing is playing up the flavors that are already in Italian breadcrumbs and just punching them up a little bit because these are going to roast in the artichokes, which will mute their flavor a little bit. So you'd wanna, you wanna make sure it's front and center. I'm gonna use five cloves today. All I'm gonna do is, you can definitely grate these on a microplane. That's a super easy way just to make sure they're nice, fine little, tendrils of garlic being distributed through your breadcrumb mix, but since I already have my knife out, it's just as fast to work through this way and trim off any little woody stems that you might find. Okay, nice chopped up, beautifully minced garlic, plenty of it going into our breadcrumb mix. Oh, let's see how these are happening. What's going on? Ooh, bubble, bubble, twist and twist. I like it. So you can see the steam is like circulating up and around. I'm just gonna rotate them because we do not have the luxury of a fully capped environment here. Um, but they are steaming up nicely. You can see their color is changing a little bit, getting a little more rusty. This guy, our 
what to do if you don't have all the equipment moved, come and see. It's having a nice old steam bath. And you can see the water level is super low. I really don't want to submerge my artichokes at all. We're trying to keep it just steamy, no boiling. And it's getting a little bit low since there is all that great surface area in here. So I will add just a splash more water. And adding hot water is actually great because then you don't accidentally reduce the cooking temperature and have to sort of restart the whole process all over again. Back to breadcrumbs. You can add a little garlic salt in there. We're gonna taste it and see if we actually want that or not. Just stirring together all of our breadcrumb components, the cheese, the breadcrumbs, the garlic, the Italian seasoning, that salt. Let's taste it, see how we're doing here. What else could, what else? Oh, actually, there is one more thing we're going to add. I was about to say, what else do we need? But we need one more thing, but we have to wait for it. Oh, wow. We went garlicky, guys. This is serious. This is really good. Mm. Secret ingredient happening in half an hour when those are ready. Guys, it is clearly taking my brain a little longer than normal to fire today because miraculously, this pot is now fitting. You want to know why? Here's what I did. I gave him a little haircut. The stems, which I want to remove ultimately anyway, I just sliced right off and left them in the center there so they continue to steam. And now, magically, my lid fits. So you know what? I'm still glad. I'm glad I went through that experience so that I could show you how you can do it without any special equipment. But <laughs> maybe I need a second cup of coffee today or something. That's it. Okay, so the artichokes have been in just shy of half an hour. I want to let them go a little bit longer because I just tested with a fork and they're not totally tender yet. But before the stems, which are gonna cook up a little faster, get too soft. Go ahead and grab those out for yourself and I'll show you what to do with them. So then grab your knife and what you wanna do over here We've already peeled these stems, if you remember, but just go ahead and peel off any remaining leaves that might be there. And you just wanna give them a little rough chop. And this is going to add an extra boost of yummy artichoke flavor, tender moisture, and a little bit of texture into your breadcrumb mix. You waste no part of this delicious, flavorful veg into our cheese and our breadcrumbs and our garlic in there. And if you find that there's any pieces that are like too woody to really cut through, you can go ahead and leave those to the side because you won't want them in your breadcrumbs either. But, oh, mm. these are now beautifully tender. Drain them if there's anything there and just sort of set them as upright as possible into your baking dish. And we're just going to, once they cool just a little bit, we are going to, um, loosen up the leaves a little bit more so that they have plenty of space for ooh. <laughs> plenty of space for the breadcrumbs to settle um they are hot obviously as you can see and you definitely can just do them with your hands but um, it's easy just to spread them with a fork like so nice pockets for all the breadcrumbs. So the first thing we want to do to make sure that they are really juicy and glossy and delicious is anoint with some olive oil throughout the whole sort of circle. Get all those little crevices. And now in with our breadcrumbs. So that, that initial just sort of glossing with the olive oil I find is helpful because it gives a little more stickiness for the breadcrumbs to really hold on and hold into their places around all these little leaves. And then we're gonna add just a bit more once the breadcrumbs are in to really saturate and flavor them up. And any little bits and bobs that fall into the base of the pot, don't you worry, you're gonna scoop those up. They're gonna be the extra saucy, extra delicious version of the breadcrumbs that you will just scoop up and Divide among your favorite people into these outer leaves too. Don't skip them. And these little gems of 
chopped up artichoke stems are going to give us nice little bursts of juicy flavor in there too. All right, I feel like that one goes to your favorite person. Definitely. It looks nice and stuffed up to the top. And just wiggle if you feel like there's some positions that have escaped you, eluded you in your stuffing. Ooh, be careful because this little center part here has stabbed me now like four times. It is so vicious. They're like little tiny daggers. I'm gonna eat you, don't you worry. So these are mostly filled up all the way. I have just a little bit of breadcrumb left over. What I'm going to do is olive oil, olive oil. Okay, and then chicken broth. And the chicken broth really helps to saturate our breadcrumb mix and make sure that it continues to help the artichoke tenderize and cook as it roasts. Try to pour it very gently so you don't run the risk of everything kind of splashing away. And you also sort of want the base of the pan to have a little moisture on it. I'm gonna just sort of nestle these together so they use each other for support, like good little artichoke friends. And scoop up any little bits of, oh yeah, look at how this crumble sort of just sticks together. Top with what's left of our breadcrumbs. And, Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we are in business right now. I do want the base of my pan just a little bit wetter than it currently is, because I do want them just to have a chance to finish steaming if there's anything left in there that needs some softening. I'm gonna grab a little water, because I ran out of broth. And maybe half a cup I'll add just to the base of this rather large pan. Okay, one last time just because we can. Grab some tin foil and just carefully cover your pot to seal in the moisture of that broth on the base of the pan and um, drizzled all throughout your veg. We are gonna continue to cook these by roasting them in a 350 degree oven for another half an hour or so. Then we'll take the foil off and broil them just so the tops get golden brown. It's gonna be so good. Into the oven. So the artichokes were in like a little long, 40 minutes. Then I put them under the broiler just to char the tops and you get the most golden brown little globes of vegetables stuffed with breadcrumbs and cheese. It smells utterly heavenly in here right now. It's taking me right back to being in my kitchen, in my grandparents' kitchen around the holidays where we would always have this dish ready to go um, for any big family celebration. My grandfather would work all day long to make like 30 of these come together because we've got a big family. And then we would all sit down for a big family dinner and people would tuck into their very own little vegetable gems. You don't even need a dipping sauce with these. They kind of come with their very own. There's a little bit of sauciness down here at the bottom that sometimes people would go in for, but honestly, they're gonna be so flavorful just from their own inclusion with the cheese and the herbs and the garlic and the olive oil and chicken broth that we went kind of crazy with. I really think I did my grandpa proud. Mm. Mm. Those breadcrumbs have soaked up all the juice of the chicken broth and the olive oil glistening. That's what we're looking for, this golden brown crisping on the surface. Those amazing soaked through breadcrumbs coating your tender artichoke leaves. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. You just wanna run them along your bottom teeth to pull off the flesh that's kind of stuck on each leaf. Mm. Oh, you guys, we did my grandpa proud. They are tender, so flavorful. And look, they looked a little gnarly when we first started. They were, artichokes look like weapons. A little intimidating, a little maybe lackluster when you first start. And then you show them so much love. You lavish them with olive oil and broth and breadcrumbs and cheese and all of our flavorings. And what you end up with is a true and total showstopper that make you look amazing, that you're gonna love eating, that are gonna gather your family around the table the way they do mine. 
And then we're all going to just have to call Uncle Mickey and tell him that it doesn't matter whose recipe this is. It's freaking delicious.